I'm just recording it. Share screen. Students, whenever you disconnect, kindly send me a message. I hope you're able to see my PPT. Anyone can give me some indication. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry, students. Is it visible now, the screen? Yes, sir. Yeah, some hosts uh, gave some trouble. <clears throat> so often the pure components or substances are classified into three things, solid, liquid, and gas. But in reality, this component doesn't exist in pure condition, rather, it will exist either as solid solid mixture, solid liquid mixture, or solid gas mixture, or liquid liquid mixture, liquid gas mixture, or gas gas mixture, or it could be a solid liquid and gas mixtures. So, never we will get 100% pure components, a very, very uh, rare. So, we uh, Often we available to us, the raw materials available to us, the products coming out from reactor will be always mixers. So we use various unit operations to separate them into individual components. So in the last class, we have seen, we have taken, we have started with liquid-liquid mixers. Liquid-liquid mixers are divided into uh, two subsections, are classified into two. 
one is immiscible example is organ water and the one is miscible two liquids completely mix each other and forms like a complete solution in immiscible we still distinguish two phases differently we will have oil phase and we have water phase in case of miscible we don't we cannot separate them into two individual phases we will have a complete single phase example ethanol water once you mix ethanol and water uh, visibly we cannot distinguish them and it's completely mixed and will completely convert into a single phase liquid so we have seen immiscible liquids if 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 two liquids are immiscible if the density difference is very high simply by gravity settling we can separate them simply by gravity settling we can separate them often uh, this gravity settling chambers are called as decanters in a technical terminology this gravity settling chambers are called decanters if density difference is low if density difference is low where the separation with gravity is tough we use centrifugal separators in technical terms the centrifugal separators are called centrifuges sometimes sometimes these immiscible liquids the immiscible liquids for example oil in water can be formed as a emulsions can be formed as a emulsions when these immiscible liquids forms as emulsions by definition emulsion is fine droplets of fine dispersion of minute droplets of fine droplets of one liquid is dispersed in another liquid then the liquid is immiscible so when you have emulsions we will not be able to separate them just by either by centrifuge or by gravity settling directly because uh, there are two types of emulsions one is surfactant stabilized emulsions another one is particle stabilized emulsions either in case of uh, either in case of surfactant stabilized or particle stabilized emulsions the surfactant molecule stays at the interface between oil and water one phase to another phase that is droplets to the continuous phase in case of particle stabilized emulsion the particles as particles stays at the interface between oil and water so first of all we need to break that interface we need to break that interface so so before if you want to separate emulsions that is immiscible liquids which are convert which is formed as an emulsions we need to break these emulsions we need to break that interface interfacial tension or attractive force at the interface so we add often anti emulsion anti emulsion or anti emulsion or foaming agents both are same anti emulsion or foaming agents so we will add this that will basically neutralizes the surface charge at the interface and the break the emulsion then you will have a two different phases then we can use either by centrifuge or by the decanters if you have the particles we have to add salts that neutralizes the particles then it breaks the emulsion then we can separate them so that's what we have seen in the uh, last class now we have miscible liquids miscible liquid means both liquids mix together forms as a continuous solution and into a single phase so if you want to separate miscible liquids right we have we have various methods we have various methods that can be used to separate the miscible liquids one is distillation and the one is extraction and the one is adsorption these three can be used and one is membrane separation we have these four primary methods available to separate miscible liquids right definitely you are i think you are already learning this in mass transfer course here as i said in the last class we don't go in details of this unit operations if we have a condition like this let's say we have two liquids exist now we need to separate them which method you need to use if you can quickly tell that we can use this method that is sufficient for this as part of this course so <clears throat> if if the boiling point difference is high the most preferred method to separate miscible liquids is distillation like example we have ethanol and we have water right or ethanol boiling point is 78.5 and water boiling point is 20 the difference is more than 20 uh, sorry water boiling point is 100 degrees centigrade the difference is more than 20 degrees centigrade so it will be easy to separate these two liquids with help of distillation <clears throat> if you have only two components we use binary distillation like single distillation column 
if they have more than two components, uh, let's say we have n components, we have to use n minus one number of distillation columns to separate them into individual components. So when we have more than one distillation column, we often, uh, or more than one, two components present, we call that as multi-component distillation. If boiling point difference is low, if boiling point difference is low, then we cannot use distillation because of the <clears throat> either number of trace in displacement co uh, column required will be very high or there's a chance of vegetative formation. So we will not be able to use distillation or we can use it, but it won't be economical to use distillation. So like example I have given, often extraction should be followed with the distillation. Nowadays, we have the extractive distillation coming. Both can be done. Extraction and distillation can be done at simultaneously. That's called extractive distillation. So both methods can be used. <clears throat> For example, when you have a crude distillation, after the crude distillation, we have aromatics and non-aromatics uh, comes together, like N-heptane and benzene. N-heptane and benzene. Uh, although N-heptane and benzene uh, forms a miscible uh, all so, sorry one second so n hip here aromatics and non aromatics one example is n heptane and benzene suppose we have n heptane and benzene liquid mixture right n heptane and benzene forms a miscible liquids it forms a solution uh, we will not be able to separate them or if you use distillation, it would be not economical to separate them. So first they do extract one component with the help of a solvent, then they will do the displacing process to separate them. <coughs> another scenario in case of mi miscible liquid mixtures, another method, another unit operation we can use for a miscible liquid mixtures is adsorption with a suitable adsorbent. Adsorption with a suitable adsorbent. Here I'm giving an example here. Suppose we have uh, water and some organic pollutants like phenols, biphenols or fertilizers, dissolved fertilizers present in water. We will not, we won't prefer to use adsorption here, adsorption here because when, if we, in case of this uh, pollutants present in the water, even though, let's say, if you take phenol and water, phenols and water, sometimes we have the boiling point difference very high, but still we won't prefer distillation because the quantity of these pollutants in the water is very, very low. The quantity of pollutants present in the water is very, very low. Often it will be in few grams per liter or few milligrams per liter. If you use distillation, it is not at all economical process. So at that time, rather than using distillation, even though the boiling point difference is high, certain cases we don't prefer a distillation. Rather, we prefer adsorption because the concentration of these liquid components present in the liquid or water are very low condition. Like if suppose the dissolved fertilizers are present in water, often anyway we can't use distillation because of, of this melting point is very low. So based conditions like based on the scenario to scenario, based on the conditions, we, we, we use either distillation or extractive distillation or adsorption followed by distillation or adsorption process or we use membrane separation. It is case to case. It is case to case basis. <clears throat> we will. So we will we will get to know we will we'll explain more individual details as course proceeds and I'm sure you will also learn parallelly with mass transfer course when to use which process. But in a in a general guidelines, if boiling point difference is high, we prefer distillation. But at the same time, the ratios of both liquids should be uh, like you know, it should be around fifty percent or thirty to seventy percent. It's, it's not like something is one percent, the other one is ninety nine percent. We never use distillation for that. If boiling point difference is low, we have to go for extract distillation, or we have to go for the adsorption followed by some other method to remove the uh, solvents. Another thing is membrane separation. Another method which we can use, uh, another method which we can use the miscible liquid mixtures is membrane separation. 
<coughs> membrane separation to be able to do membrane separation the molecule size difference should be significant if you want to use membrane separation the molecule size difference should be significant suppose if you use water if you use other pollutant the molecules of phenols and molecule size of phenols and molecules of water should be significantly different then only we can use the membrane separation if molecule size is uh, same or close to each other and membrane separation is not a preferred method not a preferred method so membrane separation is based on molecule size and <clears throat> distillation is based on the boiling point difference and extraction is based on the solubility and adsorption is based on the ability to adsorb onto this uh, there, is, there, is, there is a quantity called um, adsorption adsorp ability so based on these parameters we decide which method we use it so as i said as we go through uh, industrial processes when I explain case to case i will tell you which method why we using this method what are the criteria that way you will get to know more and more details so second next case i am taking gas gas mixtures suppose you have a, a gas like we have air air contains nitrogen and oxygen and it also contains co2 and uh, other uh, gas com other pollutants so this is gas gas mixture if you want to separate let's say we want to separate one gas component or we want to separate uh, gas you know, like we want to separate them into individual components what are the unit operations we use students are able to follow what i am trying to convey is making some sense or just going away so this is the problem with online classes because <laughs> i am teaching i am seeing i am teaching without seeing you so if you can give me input let's see if you not able to understand if you not able to follow or if, if not something making sense kindly rise up and ask me so that i can change the way i want to explain <clears throat> so <clears throat> when I, when we have a gas gas mixtures the most popular method is gas absorption gas absorption is the popular method of all this is the popular method to separate gas gas mixtures right how do we do absorption i'm sure you all you are aware of it so <clears throat> we have a two mixtures we have a two mixtures a and c a and c so so one is solute uh one is solute and the one is non solute and we have the solvent so b is solvent if you want to separate the a is gas and c is gas and both are present in, in as a mixture and we want to do separate them into individual components we want to separate them into individual components so this is these gas mixtures are being separated with help of a liquid solvent if you are able to separate two two gases if you able to separate two um two gases in the form of gas mixture with help of a liquid solvent that is called absorption that is called gas absorption if you have a liquid mixtures and you are separating them with help of a liquid solvent that is called any idea if we have a two liquids if we have a liquid mixture and we are separating them into individual components with help of a liquid solvent what is that unit operation is called anyone can guess can anyone tell me sorry i could not hear can you say again extraction extraction two so just i explained before that is extraction if we have a two liquid mixture if we two liquids in the in the present as a mixture and we separate them as individual components with help of liquid solvent that is called extraction we have a two gas components present as a mixture and we separate them into individual components with help of liquid solvent that is called absorption here <clears throat> the liquid solvent is selected such that 
the liquid solvent is selected such that one of the two gases, one of the two gases has more solubility than others. One of the two gases has more solubility than others. Let's say we have A and C, and A is A is soluble in this liquid solvent much more higher than C. A is so, soluble in this liquid solvent much more than C, then only we can use gas absorption. For example, uh, for example, we have we have CO2 present in the air. We have CO2 present in the air. And we wanted to remove this CO2. We wanted to remove this CO2. So if I bring any OH, if I add any OH, into this container, like I have NaOH, and on top of that we have CO2 and air. If I mix it, if I mix it, if I regressively mix it, can anyone guess what will happen? Can anyone guess what will happen? I have liquid NaOH at the bottom, I have CO2 and air at the top, then I regressively mixed. Can anyone guess what will happen after mixing? Again, Bi I have two forces. Sorry. Uh, bicarbonate will form. Bicarbonate will form. That is CO2 diffuses and transfers to NaOH. And we have air in the top. Air, air doesn't, air solubility in NaOH is very low compared to the solubility of CO2 in NaOH. So that way, after mixing, what will happen is that depends on the concentration of NaOH all the CO2, just for the ideal case, all the CO2 will transfer to NaOH and only air remains. This way, I am able to I am able to separate CO2 from the air. I am able to separate CO2 from the air with help of liquid NaOH that we call a solvent here. So that type of separation, that's a, that type of unit operation is called gas absorption. Similarly, H2S also we can separate with the help of the liquid solvents. <clears throat> just, just give me one second. Yeah, so that is one gas absorption. Now, at certain conditions, at certain conditions, we have again we have two gases. Again, we have two gases like CO2 and air. But where CO2 is very, very small quantity, let's say the CO2 is very, very small quantity in, 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 uh, uh, like let's, let's say industrial emissions will have CO2 more quantity, but in an atmospheric air, CO2 quantity is very less. If CO2 quantity is very low, that is in the gas mixtures, the quantity of one component is very, very low compared to the other quantity. At that time, we prefer to go for scrubbing. At that time, we prefer to go for scrubbing. At the time, we prefer to go for scrubbing. So the, the scrubbing, in, even in the scrubbing, the phenomena of uh, mass transfer is still absorption. Even in the scrubbing, the phenomena of mass transfer is still absorption, but only the process conditions are slightly different. The only the process conditions are slightly different. So what it is? So
Thank you, Varun, for reminding me or for informing me. Uh, may you know when it got disconnected? Just before this slide or previous slide also? You were telling about scrubbing. Scrubbing. Ah, okay. Yeah, so. Sorry guys, I'm facing a lot of trouble today. I don't know why. Yeah, so when when you have two gas mixes, when one 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 quantity is very low compared to the other quantity, we use scrubbing. For example, the CO2 concentration in the atmospheric air is very low. At that time, the, instead of using uh, instead of using absorption, we prefer to use scrubbing. In the scrubbing, we bubble this gas in the pool of liquid. In the scrubbing process, we bubble the gas in the pool of liquid. When you bubble the gas, what will happen is air and CO2 gas bubbles will move, will pass along the liquid uh, solution. At the interface, the CO2 has more solubility towards uh, solvent, hence the CO2 will diffuse into the liquid. And that way, we are able to separate CO2 from the air. So scrubbing is more preferred when we have the one quantity is very low compared to the other quantity. For example, uh, CO2, let's say CO2 air. If the CO2 concentration in uh, ppms, obviously we don't use absorption. Rather, we use the scrubbing method. That is the more efficient and the more economical compared to the absorption. Now, to separate gas gas mixers, another unit operation which we can use is adsorption. In the adsorption, the gas gas mixers are separated with help of a solid adsorbent. The gas gas mixers are separated with help of a <clears throat> solid adsorbent that is called adsorption. In this case, same if you take same scenario with same example, that is removal of CO2 from air, removal of CO2 from air. We can use a liquid solvent like NaOH. We can also use solid adsorbent called solid adsorbent like Amine functionalized silica or amine functionalized any substrate can be used for the separation of or removal of CO2 from the air. That is one, one, one example, but there are many, many examples we can give for the removal of gas gas mixtures from the uh, separation of gas gas mixtures with help of a solid adsorbent. Another, another unit operation which we can use is gas separation membranes. Again, if you want to use membranes, the molecule size should be significantly different. 
Suppose we have nitrogen, we have hydrogen, we have oxygen. Each molecule, it has its own size. So if the molecule size is close, that is, the average molecular weight is close, we will not be able to separate them with the, or the efficiency of the gas separation membranes are lower. If the molecular weight of the gases are closer, the separation with the membranes are difficult. Now, another case we take, solid-solid mixers. Solid-solid mixers. There are two types of solid-solid <clears throat> mixers possible. One is homogeneous, another one is heterogeneous. Homogeneous, heterogeneous doesn't mean we have the two different comp. Of course, solid-solid mixers means two different components. But if uniformly dispersed, that's called homogeneous. If non-uniformly dispersed, is called heterogeneous. Right? For example, if you take alloys, nickel alloys, or <clears throat> like if you take many, many alloys, they're uniformly distributed along the matrix. Another example is carbonate rock that is uniformly distributed along the matrix. So if when you have two materials, if you have a sol two solid liquid mixers, one of the important unit operation which we can use is leaching. One of the important unit operation which we can use is leaching. In the leaching, in the leaching, two solid solid liquid mixers are separated with the help of a liquid solvent. In the leaching, solid solid mixers are separated with the help of a liquid solvent that is called leaching. Like we have two minerals, two metals or two solids are uh, uniformly distributed. But out of these two, one is more soluble in the liquid solvent. Other one is less soluble in liquid solvent. Then we go for the leaching. In case of heterogeneous, in case of heterogeneous, example is iron ore. The iron ore contain many of the impurities, many of the impurities. Now those impurities are not uniformly distributed, not uniformly distributed. Also, we will be able to separate them into individual grains. We will be able to separate them into individual grains. In case of homogeneous, everything is like a single metal, single material. Everything is like a single material. Like nowadays we all see gold ornaments, right? The gold ornaments are mixed with copper. When the gold alone cannot be made as ornament. Gold is mixed with copper, then made as ornament. But you can see that both copper and gold is together uh, stays as a single solid. That's what's called homogeneous solid. But in case of uh, uh, in, the, in case of heterogeneous, both are we can separate them grain boundaries. We can separate them in individual components. Like another example, I give you will you'll understand better for heterogeneous is um, sand and stones. Like both are mixed, both are mixed, but physically we can also separate them. Both are uniformly mixed, but physically we can separate them. It comes under heterogeneous classification. So if if we have, if the melting point difference between two solid materials are significantly different, if the melting point of the two solid materials is significantly different, then we can separate them. We can separate them simply by heating. We can separate them simply by heating. If two are two are two are different materials, let's say if you have two of different materials and different size. We can simply separate them by with help of sieving. I hope you are understanding uh, whatever I'm trying to explain. We have solid solid mixer. One is homogeneous and the one is heterogeneous. In homogeneous solid solid mixer, both solids are present as a single solid. Example is gold and copper present in the gold ornament. Like our alloys, nickel alloys or even the steel whatever we are seeing the steel, it's an alloy. Both, both solid materials present as a single solid material. If you want to separate uh, such type of homogeneous solid solid mixers, we, we can use leaching method. In leaching method, we will use a liquid solvent in which one of the two solids are uh, dissolves more than other material. In case of heterogeneous, if melting point difference is high, Based on simple heating method, we can separate them into two single components. Another one is we can do the sieving. We can do the sieving method. For example, if you take the if if we if we have if we ever uh, seen the steel plant or steel industry by any chance, if you have at least look into it, 
the iron ore contains iron plus many other impurities. Now, the iron melts at 1100 degrees centigrade. Iron melts at 1100 degrees centigrade. Whereas, impurities doesn't melt at 1100 degrees centigrade. They melt at much more higher temperature. So, how do we separate iron from iron ore or those impurities? If you heat the whole iron ore at 1100 degrees centigrade, only iron ore melts and convert to liquid form, whereas impurities still in the remain solid form. So that way, after melting at 1100 degrees centigrade temperature, we have a liquid iron and we have the uh, non-meltable impurities. That way, we will able to separate them into solid phase, liquid phase. Got that liquid uh, that liquid iron is removed and further process to get whatever materials we wanted. <clears throat> so that is the way we can separate them uh, solid solid mixer. So far we have seen liquid liquid, gas gas and solid solid mixers. Suppose we have the gas solid. Suppose we have the gas solid. Can anyone give me example of gas solid? In which condition we say gas solid is exist? Any scenario can anyone explain? Smoke. Smoke, yes. One, one good example is smoke. That is solid particles are dispersed in the gas medium. Like in the smoke, we have gases and we have the fine particles of dust and uh, carbon will present. Right? Very good. How do we separate them? How do we separate the solid particles from the gas? We can use chimney. Chimney? Chimney? Chimney is only to emit the gases, no? Filters. Chimney. Filters, yes. We can use filters. Very good. Any other? Depends upon the particle size. Can, any, can we suggest something else? One is filter, definitely filter. But if it is hot, let's say the smoke is hot, so we will not be able to use normal filters because most of the filters are made of polymers. So it might it might be uh, like good idea to use filters if it is hot. So any other methods we choose or we can use to separate gas solid mixers, which we have seen in mechanical operations course. Are you getting any idea apart from filters? Electrostatic precipitator. Yes, electrostatic precipitator we can use. That is one. Any other one? Based on size difference, maybe we can use uh, any other separators which we learn. Like, name, name any one example. Um, so, for example, cyclone separator. Yes, cyclone separator, true. So we can, we can use back filters or filters or we can use cyclone separators or we can use electrostatic precipitator. It depends on the charging ability and particle size and what are the characteristics we have seen already. Another example, one is solid particles are trapped in gas. Another example also possible that gas is trapped in a solid, like we have a gas hydrates. You might have heard and the gas is trapped in the rock. Gas is trapped in a rock, like natural gas is trapped in a rock or. And uh, <clears throat> in that case, what we do? Suppose a gas is trapped in a solid. How do we how do we uh, separate them with help of desorption? With help of desorption. Or oh, this is desorption is opposite of an adsorption. Like we have a gas is trapped in a solid. When we purge another gas through that one because of the concentration gradient, whatever gas present trapped in the, whatever gas trapped in the solid material tend to diffuse outside. They tend to diffuse outside. So that way, this option method can be used to separate if the gas is trapped in solid particle. If solid particles are dispersed in gas, just now you, you all told what are the methods we can use. If gas is trapped in solid particles, we can use this option to separate them. 
sir is spons ball example of gas trapped in solid which one can you repeat i do not hear sponge ball sponge ball or oh, means air is in the sponge that way yes sir yes yes that is that is true suppose yeah the same example suppose we have the let's say some argon gas is trapped in the sponge ball instead of air if you wanted to separate that argon from that sponge sponge whatever foam like foam we can if you purge some uh, air through that one very fast the argon will be diffused into air because of the concentration gradient because argon concentration in the air is zero right let's suppose this is the sponge ball sorry again sorry the game disconnected my screen yeah sorry i'm not able to write so yeah we have a sponge in which we have some gas is trapped now if you want to remove that gas trapped in the sponge how do we do by purging other gas through that one and the argon let's say argon in the sponge argon concentration in the sponge is very high whereas if you purge a gas over the sponge where the argon concentration is almost zero because of the concentration different the argon diffuses from the sponge to the air okay and did i answer your question yes sir yeah so next one is gas liquid the next one is gas liquid <clears throat> so and again the scenario is uh, we can take gas liquid is the simplest scenario we can think of is uh, fine droplets of water in the air right we see mist formation in the air or in winter season we can very well uh, relate to this one so how do we separate that water water droplets in air we can pass through a porous super super absorbent like a cotton a sponge or something then obviously the fine droplets will be absorbed uh, onto that super absorbent or we can bubble we can bubble this gas liquid mixture through a pool of liquid then the liquid will be dispersed in the the liquid loves liquid so liquid will be transferred towards liquid and gas will remain and gas will come outside and then we can use this compression if you use high pressure and we know uh, we know water vapor present in the water droplets can get compressed and condensed into liquid but gas will not be condensed opposite of that is gas molecules or gas bubbles are trapped in liquid stream gas trapped in liquid stream again we can use bubbling and we can also use solid adsorbent solid adsorbent now so that's what we have seen gas liquid and gas solid now we have a gas solid and liquid all three are present gas solid and liquid all three are present so we will not be able to deal them all the three at a time so we have out of three we have to separate the one first then we have to separate other two using the existing techniques so often if we have a gas solid and liquid we will tend to separate solids because that is easier to separate by using any um, any cyclo separator or filters we can separate them solid particles then we can purify then it comes to a case of gas liquid or liquid gas and accordingly we can use different unit operations to separate them so we have seen all possible combinations like solid solid liquid liquid gas gas 
or gas liquid or liquid gas all the all the uh, six combinations how to treat of course i have only given very few what you already know it later on some of the cases where uh, different unit operators will come at that time we will explain those details any questions students do you understood whatever i'm trying to convey if you got any questions kindly ask me probably no question so that is one another one is transportation of solids like we have seen in the mechanical operation so i i don't think i need to spend any time here we use conveyors one is belt conveyor bucket elevators this is what we have seen and screw conveyors this also we have seen in the mechanical operations course <clears throat> then we also use pneumatic conveyors we also see in this pneumatic conveyor um in the mechanical operation so i don't have to spend much time here transportation of liquids and gases this is all these are also another types of unit operations so we use pumps centrifugal pump this is centrifugal pump then we have the positive displacement pumps reciprocating pumps are the positive displacement pumps i hope you have learned this in the fluid mechanics course so these are for the transportation of liquids we use centrifugal pumps and positive displacement pumps and rotary pump this is the example for rotary pump or typical cross section of a rotary pump and there is diaphragm pump if we have a if the solid particles are present in the liquids and liquids if the solid particles are present in liquids if we need to transport slurries solid particles present in liquid means slurries if we need to transport slurries we use diaphragm pumps we use diaphragm pumps example suppose if you go to any pharmaceutical industry where they have to transport the concentrated slurries from one position to another position that's uh, where we have to use diaphragm pumps we can't use uh, centrifugal pumps or reciprocating pumps so if you visit any pharmaceutical industry often you will see diaphragm pumps if you if you visit any oil refinery you will often you will see centrifugal pumps even often you will see centrifugal pumps or reciprocating pumps so fans blowers and compressors are used for the transportation of gases fans blowers and compressors are used uh, for the transportation of gases fans and blowers acts based on the centrifugal action compressors based on the reciprocating action fans and blowers are similar in terms of functioning only difference is fans can only give very little amount of pressure than the blower whereas compressors can give much more higher pressure so this is a students do you have you do you know how the centrifugal pump works did i explain or did you seen any other course so actually uh, we have not seen the working of different type of pumps oh we have not seen so maybe yeah i think i, I will spend few minutes as it's all the 1056 we will explain in the next class and different pumps how they work and what are the differences maybe it will be useful if at all you visit any industry i think i will continue from here this is further vacuum jet ejectors uh, i don't know Either maybe last year i taught it right? so we'll we'll continue vacuum generation and pumps in the next class so if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise we will stop here maybe you can join the next class if you have i hope you are able to follow with this distraction of and uh, getting disconnected in between 
if it is making sense there will be more good if you could not understand or if, if the way i am explaining is not making good sense please do let me know okay we can always find a better way to explain amon you are trying to say something you are muted actually Aman, are you trying to say something? Actually, I 